Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome to the second in our series of Finding Your Own Voice, What You Need to Be a Professional Bass Player, The Fundamentals. Last week we talked about the right hand. This week we're going to talk about the left hand and fingerboard harmony. Fingerboard harmony is about recognizing the notes within the scale and their relationship to the harmonies. To do that, we have to start by, first of all, exploring and discovering where the notes are on the bass. Vital, vital. I'm going to put on Fred, my trusty metronome. Here we go. We learned about him last week. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the C major scale in this case, but it's true for all scales, D, A, G, flats and sharps. And we're going to develop learning where the notes are on each string, because this is vital in order to be able to imply the harmonies that you have to play. So we start with our exercise from the first video. Am I breathing? Am I accurate? Am I dynamically playing the same thing? And then that hand just keeps going. When I play the notes with my left hand, I'm going to say which notes I'm playing, okay? And I can stay as long as I need on each note until I'm ready to move to the next one. What does that mean when I recognize where the note is, what it's called, and which finger I'm going to use in order to play the note? So C major, of course, the lowest note on bass is an E, unless you have a five string. I don't want to get into a fight about that. E is the third note of C major, but we're carrying on from E in the scale of C major, one of the modes. So here we go, I say the note E and I'm going to F. And when I'm ready, I say I'm gonna do my first finger, here's F and I go. Now, what's the next note? The next note is G. When I'm ready, I recognize it's a third fret. I'm gonna use my third finger. When I'm ready, think ahead and move. And then it becomes very clear and very accurate. And I'm putting all this information in my brain onto A first finger in my case. If you've got long fingers, maybe you'll use your fourth finger. Mine are too small for that. Always looking ahead. Right hand always in tempo. Never having to change according to a cycle of four beats to the bar or anything. Next note is B. Third finger. Okay. All the time very accurate. Thinking ahead to C. Finally got to the tonic with my pinky. There we go. Then I'm going to go up to D. Okay, with my second finger, because that's convenient for me. Okay, because we're going up to the octave, and then we're going to go back down. And then my pinky on E. So I'm always playing the right note. I'm always thinking ahead. I'm always checking am I breathing. I only move when I'm comfortable to move. Back to the D. Okay, and I can use different fingerings if I want. You know, you'll discover what works for you best. And then I'm going to go to the C, big jump. So I look at my pinky there and look at my right hand, always in tempo. And I'm going to do this big jump. Plenty of time. Okay, to the B, whenever I want. And then to the A, always say the note before you go to the note. Third finger to G, here we go. Okay, first finger to F. And then open string E. Okay, now of course you need to do this on every string, okay? So, you know, A is A, B, C, D. It's not A, B, C sharp. We're not in A major. We're in C major all the time. We're playing the modes. When you've done that, go and do F. When you've done F, go back and do D. Go up in sharps and flaps or Gs, whatever works for you, okay? But make sure you keep a list and do it in an organized fashion. If you do this exercise on a regular basis, you'll start to get awareness of where the notes are, you'll start to understand which notes you're using within the harmonies, and when you have to play and develop your own line, wherever you are on the bass, you'll be able to find the notes you need. So if I'm here and I need C, you know, I see it here. If I'm here, I see C. If I'm here, I see C, you know, because um, I see G, uh, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G. Wherever I am, I see it, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Wherever I am, I see the notes. And then when I'm playing a cycle of songs, cycle of chords in a song, I can find the notes without running around and being trapped into position playing and habits. So the next exercise will bring those together, talk more about this holistic event and explain the importance of 
fingerboard harmony together with rhythm, how you bring them together, how you make them more accurate. We'll bring the metronome back into the mix. We'll start doing interesting stuff where we put the click of the metronome on the second and the fourth beat, so on and so forth. Hope this helps you. Have an amazing day. Play the bass. Only good stuff. Mark Smalian, checking out. Mm-hmm.